Well, blessings and hallelujah, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, hallelujah. Well, I trust this finds you feeling blessed and revived, friends. We are continuing our study in the book of First Enoch. And today we are beginning the section which is titled the Dream and Vision section. Now, I'm finding it very difficult to contain the excitement that I have because as I've been reading forward to see what we're going to present today, I made it to chapter 89. And I would highly encourage you to read this before the next time we're together because you are going to be absolutely amazed at what is going to be presented. So I cannot encourage you enough not to miss the next time we're together. Chapter 89, you are going to be amazed and surprised about what we're going to learn together. Now I have posted a link in the description box below if you'd like to follow along with us. So let's begin at chapter 83 and we're going to try to make it to chapter 88 today. Now Enoch says, my son Methuselah, I will show thee all my visions which I have seen, recounting them before thee. Two visions I saw before I took a wife, and the one was quite unlike the other. The first when I was learning to write, the second before I took thy mother when I saw a terrible vision, and regarding them I prayed to the Lord. I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather Mahalalel, when I saw in a vision how the heaven collapsed and was born off and fell to the earth. And when it fell to the earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss, and mountains were suspended on mountains, and hills sank down on hills, and high trees were rent from their stems, and hurled down and sunk in the abyss. And thereupon a word fell into my mouth, and I lifted up my voice to cry aloud and said, The earth is destroyed." And my grandfather, Mahalalel, waked me, and as I lay near him, he said unto me, Why dost thou cry so, my son, and why dost thou make such lamentation? And I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen. And he said unto me, A terrible thing hast thou seen, my son, and of grave moment is thy dream vision as to the secrets of all the sin of the earth. It must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with a great destruction. And now, my son, arise and make petition to the Lord of glory, since thou art a believer, that a remnant may remain on the earth, and that he may not destroy the whole earth. My son, from heaven all this will come upon the earth, and upon the earth there will be great destruction. After that I arose, and prayed, and implored, and besought, and wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world, and I will show everything to thee, my son Methuselah. And when I had gone forth below and seen the heaven, and the sun rising in the east, and the moon setting in the west, and a few stars, and the whole earth, and everything as he had known it in the beginning, then I blessed the Lord of judgment, and extolled him, because he had made the sun to go forth from the windows of the east, and he ascended and rose on the face of the heaven. And he set out and kept traversing the path shown upon him. Chapter 84. And I lifted up my hands in righteousness, and I blessed the holy and great one. And I spake with the breath of my mouth, and with the tongue of flesh, which God has made for the children of the flesh of men, that they should speak therewith. And he gave them breath and a tongue and a mouth, that they should speak therewith. Blessed be thou, O Lord, King, great and mighty in thy greatness, Lord of the whole creation of the heaven, King of kings and God of the whole world. Now what Enoch is doing here is he's saying, I'm going to petition the Lord not to destroy the earth, but he is King of kings. He is creator and he can do as he so wishes. He continues and says, Thy power and kingship and greatness abide forever and ever, and throughout all generations thy dominion, and all the heavens are thy throne forever, and the whole earth thy footstool forever and ever. 
For thou hast made and thou rulest all things, and nothing is too hard for thee. Wisdom departs not from the place of thy throne, nor does it turn away from thy presence. And thou knowest and seest and hearest everything, and there is nothing hidden from thee, for thou seest everything. And now the angels of thy heavens are guilty of trespass. And upon the flesh of men abideth thy wrath until the great day of judgment. And now, O God and Lord and great King, I implore and beseech thee to fulfill my prayer, to leave me a posterity on earth, and not destroy all the flesh of man, and that thou would not make the earth without inhabitants, so that there should be an eternal destruction. And now, my Lord, destroy from the earth the flesh which has aroused thy wrath, But the flesh of righteousness and uprightness establish as a plant of the eternal seed. Notice he says seed, one single seed, not many. This would be in reference to the promised one, Jesus the Messiah of Nazareth. And hide not thy face from the prayer of thy servant, O Lord. Chapter 85. And after this I saw another dream, and I will show the whole dream to thee, my son. And Enoch lifted up his voice and spake to his son Methuselah, To thee, my son, will I speak. Hear my words. Incline thine ear to the dream vision of thy father. Before I took thy mother Edna, I saw in a vision on my bed, and behold, a bull came forth from the earth, and that bull was white. After it came forth a heifer, and along with this came forth two bulls, one of them black and the other red. Now, as I attempted to whet your appetite for the things to come in chapter 89, let me just say that the things that we're going to read from here to 88 are going to be explained in chapter 89. So if you don't quite understand this, make sure that you do not miss chapter 89. I cannot contain the excitement. I wanted to do a video on it today, but it's much too lengthy for me to be able to do so. Verse 4. And that black bull gored the red one and pursued him over the earth. And thereupon I could no longer see that red bull. But that black bull grew and that heifer went with him. And I saw that many oxen proceeded from him which resembled and followed him. And that cow, that first one, went down from the presence of that first bull in order to seek that red one, but found him not and lamented with a great lamentation over him and sought him. And I looked till that first bull came to her and quieted her. And from that time onward, she cried no more. And after that, she bore another white bull. And after him, she bore many bulls and black cows. And I saw in my sleep that white bull likewise grow and become a great white bull. And from him proceeded many white bulls and they resembled him. And they began to beget many white bulls, which resembled them one following the other, even many. Chapter 86. And again, I saw with mine eyes as I slept, and I saw the heaven above. And behold, a star fell from heaven, and it arose and eat and pastured amongst those oxen. And after that, I saw the large and the black oxen. And behold, they all changed their stalls and pastures and their cattle, and they began to live with each other. And again I saw in the vision, and looked towards the heaven. And behold, I saw many stars descend, and cast themselves down from heaven to that first star. And they became bulls amongst those cattle, and pastured with them amongst them. Now let me just say here that this is speaking, the first star being that of Lucifer. The remaining stars that descended being the fallen angels. And as they became bulls amongst those cattle and pastured with them amongst them, this is meaning that they had sex with the women of earth. They became one with mankind on planet earth. Enoch continues in verse 4, And I looked at them and saw, and behold, they all let out their privy members like horses. And they began to cover the cows of the oxen. And they all became pregnant and bare elephants, camels, and asses. And all the oxen feared them and were affrighted at them. And they began to bite with their teeth and to devour and to gore with their horns. 
And they began, moreover, to devour those oxen. And behold, all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them. Now, the language here is, is very symbolic. It's very picturesque. And each of these things represent the story that has been told to us so far. And so when it speaks of the oxen feared them and were affrighted at them, these would be the people of earth. And they began to bite with their teeth and to devour and to gore with their horns. This would be the giants. And they began moreover to devour those oxen. The giants began to devour the men of earth. And behold, all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them. So they were in great hiding against these giants. We picture them living life just as we do today. But their lives were lived in sheer terror because of the havoc, the chaos, and the destruction that these giants were causing upon planet Earth. Chapter 87. And again, I saw how they began to gore each other and to devour each other, and the earth began to cry aloud. And I raised mine eyes again to heaven, and I saw in the vision, and behold, there came forth from heaven beings who were like white men, and four went forth from that place, and three with them. And those three that had last come forth grasped me by my hand, and took me up away from the generations of the earth, and raised me up to a lofty place, and showed me a tower raised high above the earth, and all the hills were lower. And one said unto me, Remain here till thou seest everything that befalls those elephants, camels, and asses, which would be a figurative way of speaking of the giants, and the stars and the oxen, and all of them, the stars being the fallen angels, the oxen being the men of earth. Now when it speaks of four coming in verse 2, from the heaven, beings who were like white men, four went forth from that place and three with them. This would seem to me to go all the way back to chapter 9 and be speaking of Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel, the holy angels of God, the holy mighty angels of God. And let me just remind you here that I have been able to find no commentaries on the book of Enoch. So if I am wrong here, please don't hold it against me. I'm only doing the best that I can do to incorporate everything that we've read thus far into what we're reading now. And so as I read this, that's what stands out to me. If you have any ideas or input, please leave a comment in the sections below. Chapter 88. I saw one of those four who had come forth first and he sees that first star, being Lucifer, which had fallen from the heaven, and bound it hand and foot, and cast it into an abyss. Now that abyss was narrow and deep and horrible and dark. Could this be Gehenna, the final resting place of Lucifer and all his fallen angels? Verse 2, And one of them drew a sword, and gave it to those elephants and camels and asses. Then they began to smite each other, and the whole earth quaked because of them. Now, if you'll remember back in chapter 7, it says in verse 5, they began, speaking of the, the giants, they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink one another's blood. And that's what we're being told here. They drew a sword, gave it to those elephants, camels, and asses, which we're saying is figurative speech for the giants. Then these giants began to smite each other, and the whole earth, all the men of earth, quaked because of what these giants were doing. Verse 3, And as I was beholding in the vision, lo, one of those four who had come forth stoned them from heaven, and gathered and took all the great stars whose private members were like those of horses, and bound them all hand and foot, and cast them in an abyss of the earth. Now, as I stated, we're going to end there today because chapter 89, if I remember right, has 75 verses. Actually, it's 76 verses. And as much as I want to continue into chapter 89 today, I just can't do it. The next video is going to be a little bit more lengthy than what you're used to, but I promise there won't be a bored moment in the entire video. So once again, read chapter 89 before the next time we're together, which will be in two days. 
It will be up live on Wednesday morning. And be ready to be shocked, stunned, amazed, astounded, excited, and elated. And thus far in our series on the book of Enoch, if there's not one that you've seen yet, chapter 89 is the one that you're going to want to see and you're going to want to pass along to others. Well, I hope that I've created much anticipation for you on what is to come specifically in chapter 89. I haven't read past chapter 89, so if, if the remaining chapters are as good as chapter 89, we are in for a treat. With that being said, I pray, I truly hope and pray that your journey with Jesus is blessed, that you are experienced fresh and new and exciting things as you read and study his word, and that you are finding new opportunities each and every day to serve him by serving others. I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.